Hey guys, it's Rich with video number 9 of the Crystal Pagan series. In this video, we're talking about elemental energies. So it would be pretty terrible not to discuss elemental energies since we've discussed the concepts of energy, we discussed the grounding of energy, and the centering of energy. If you haven't watched those videos, I encourage you to go and check those out. But it would be a disservice to not discuss elemental energies. In the coming four weeks, we're actually going to be looking at each individual elemental energy in and of itself in its own way, shape, and form. So stay tuned for those videos happening in the following weeks. In this video, though, I want to talk about what elemental energies are. Uh, how did we get the equivalency of north equaling earth or west equaling water? How did we get those? And can they be changed? I also want to address the order in which we invoke those energies or that we call those quarters. Do you do north first? Do you do east first? Could you do south? Could you do west first? These are questions that I had after starting to reevaluate my own practice and how I viewed elemental energies. So the first question is why do you want to connect with elemental energies? Well, the way I view elemental energies is it keeps you balanced. It keeps you kind of on that bouncing ball, like you're the, the sea lion or the seal at the circus. It's kind of like you have this bouncing ball and you need to stand on this bouncing ball during your ritual and you have these different energies pulling at you from different directions and it keeps you centered on that ball, keeping you completely balanced. Now this doesn't only mean that in ritual you need to be balanced. In your daily life, your mundane life, whenever you go to work and you just do the daily grind, keeping a balance then can be greatly beneficial because whenever you go to work and you're balanced and you're calm and you're collected and everything just falls into place. This doesn't mean that somebody else that's unbalanced won't have an effect on you. It just means that whenever you are there in that moment connected to those energies of all four directions that you are balanced on that ball that you are at peace now when you have these elemental energies in spell work it keeps you balanced but the elemental energies also will feed you the energies that you need the vibrations that you need to perform a certain type of spell work picture it as in fire the element of fire will feed you that passion, that love that you need for a love spell. Or how the earth energy will feed to you the growing aspect of bringing in wealth. Uh, something like that. And I'll cover more on that in the following videos. But that is one of the root reasons why you want to deal with elemental energies. These elemental energies, they keep you balanced, but they also feed you for your spell working, for your ritual work. And like I said, I'm going to be discussing more on how these elemental energies actually feed into your ritual practice, your spell working, in the future videos. So stay tuned for those. The next thing that I want to discuss is which element comes first. In some beliefs, north comes first. In other beliefs, east comes first. For me, I'm pretty much of an east goer. I start at the east, I end at the north. And that was the way for most of my practice, up until recently. And I still have the tendency to do east first. However, I've also started rattling around in my mind, what would happen if I started in the south first? Say I wanted to do a love spell, and I wanted to start in the south and finish in the east. Or, if I wanted to do a love spell and I started in the west and finished in the south, what would happen? In one aspect, whenever I think of this, I see if starting in the south at the beginning of my circle casting, I'm saying to the element of fire, this ritual is about passion, it is about love, it is about connecting with somebody through that passion. However, if I finish with the element of fire. Then I've gone to the west, I've collected the energy of water, I've 
held tight to that rope. I've clipped it on my my little belt. I've connected to earth, clicked that on my belt. I've gone to the east and clicked that on my belt. And now I'm ready to grab fire and start pulling in that energy. All the other uh, elements keep me balanced as I am pulling in that energy of the south. So that is my theory on utilizing different elements. And which one you actually start first could depend on what type of spell or ritual you want to do. It could totally depend on the purpose that you have behind your ritual, the why behind what you do. Another thing that has to be addressed whenever looking at elemental energies is the association. Now, normally you will see in print that for the northern hemisphere, north equals earth, west equals water, east equals air, and south equals fire. These were mostly teachings from Europe and uh, Great Britain and all that, so you have to kind of take that into consideration. And you also have to take into consideration that these were done in the Northern Hemisphere. If you were in the Southern Hemisphere, it could totally be the case that North equals fire, because you have an equator to the north of you. To the south of you, you have something that's cold, something that's... Uh, may, maybe you have a mountain range down there, and that could be your Earth representation. You have water, say, to the west or to the east. That can change up. Maybe you have gusts of wind that come down from the west instead of in the east. It all depends on your geographical location and how you interact with it. For me, the east has a certain importance that I will discuss in next week's video as we're discussing the east. But what I really want to hit home with this portion is, are you asking the question of the why behind what you're doing? Are you really questioning what you're doing and why you're doing it? What does it mean to you? And if it doesn't mean what everybody else says it means, are you willing to change it to mean exactly what it means for you and only you? If you have a different interpretation of what each elemental energy means for you than what is the mainstream, please do share it with a comment below. If you are not subscribed to me, go ahead and click subscribe right above my head. So I wrote a blog post on this, so go ahead and see that at Christopaganism.com. And you can stalk me on Twitter if you'd like to keep up to date with things that are going on in my life, as well as whenever I post something on the blog, or whenever I find something cool on Tumblr, or basically any time I want to give any motivational advice. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter if that's something that you are interested in. Until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.